Whoa! Welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back for the final round of the Lumalore Hidden Reveal Reaper slash Pinup. And as you can maybe see, or not, again, lights are on, lights are on, and you can't really see much. It doesn't have much of an impact in the daytime. Well, let's kill those lights. You can see what we got. All right, that's better. You can't really see me anymore, but now you get a better look at the Lumalore. And uh, let me flip you around, and then you can really see what we're into here. <laughs> it's dark. I need my flashlight. <laughs> oh, yes. And with the lights out is where this stuff truly shines. All puns intended. And you may see I have gone ahead and masked off an orange pinstripe masking tape just to save our pinstripe line so that we can go ahead and hide this lightning bolt. Which we've gone ahead and done in this one a little bit better. I know, I move one step ahead of you guys. I'm still learning with this stuff, so I'd rather tell you guys my mistakes and you can learn from them that way than have ample footage of me just, you know, messing up. <laughs> it happens. All right, let's get in on this. I'm going to kick the lights back on and you can see where we are at. All right, and as I've said, I did go ahead on this one and darken up the lightning bolt so we have more of that hidden reveal. When the light is off, it virtually disappears. You can still kind of see it, but that's about the best I think I'm going to get away with. What do you guys think? And you will see on this one, it is quite different. Very in your face, lights on, <laughs> lights off. So that's our next step. We're going to get this lightning bolt hidden and blacked out. I'm going to show you guys how I done did it. And um, follow along for some helpful tips. <laughs> oh, yes. Helpful tips from a professional? Question mark. <laughs> All right. The first thing we're going to do here is tack on with some magnets our shield of a cutout of the full Reaper and cloak. This masks off that whole section. Test that paint on a scrap surface. Before you go, and what we are using here as the air and stencil combination screams in my ear. Count yourself lucky, you only get a small taste of this for some real time. We're going to speed her up real quick here. But yes, what we are using for paint, as I was alluding to, is a house of color black. This is the urethane paint to match the black base. Thinned out quite a bit. And as you can see as we speed this up. I am just going to the outside of these lightning bolts, just softening up, keeping that interior glow, knocking back some of them bolts to make them look three-dimensional, and just giving the whole thing a little bit of a dark tone. And now you can see with the lights off, we've pretty much got them hidden. Now, because I want more of a lightning bolt effect, and I want this to really have some punch when the lights are on, the Lumilor lights. I'm going to go in with a razor blade on my exacto knife and I'm going to actually scratch just the center of this just to pull out that extreme highlight. And again, going to be easier to do with the lights off. Like so, and away we go. Alright, so it's kind of crucial here that you try not to overlap too many lines here or you will have it look less like a lightning bolt and more like a whole bunch of scratches so as we speed her up here and you can see a little bit better we're gonna want to hold our exacto knife at about a 30 30 40 degree angle from your surface you definitely don't want to be perpendicular straight up and down because you're just gonna dig straight into that paint and with this lumilor that's dangerous and you don't want to be parallel where you're like flush on because then you're going to scratch a whole wide surface. So maybe if you've never done it before, do a test sample. Always a wise suggestion. And boom, there you have it. I'm going to bring you in a little closer so you can see. It ain't that hard. 
And we've got lightning. And the thunder. Thunder. Yeah, that just happened. Yeah, all right, moving forward, you're going to want to remove all your magnets and your reaper and cloak shield. And then apply your pinup girl shield with more magnets. And here's a little trick I use for these little outcroppings that kind of tend to fold up a little bit. Is I'll just take an old X-Acto blade, slap it underneath a magnet, and that will hold that little outcropping of paper down nice and tight to the surface so you don't get any underspray blown underneath. Tip for the brain box. And with the same black, again, with the lights on, we want this to disappear. So I'm going to lightly hit the whole thing until we kind of see this thing disappear. Out of paint. Reload. And actually, it might be better to have the lights off for this stage. Definitely better to have the lights off for this stage. And we can see how much we're toning it down. Just a light dusting will do. One thing I forgot to mention is give it a quick wipe down. When you're scraping it and scratching it, you tend to leave little nubbies of paint behind. You don't want to seal those in. So before you get too far, wipe those bad boys off. <laughs> and we're just going to continue to dust this from about three, four inches away. Well, that's getting pretty hidden considering where we were before. I'm pretty happy with that. Turn the lights on. I still see my bolts. Turn the studio lights off. And that is perfect. Just the same as that one. Minus the whole wall shield. And and dude, watch out for that exacto blade. Nah, <laughs> nah. He's a professional. Voila. Voila, indeed. Now, recapping back to the first and second video in this series, I am going back to my gray premixed and ready to go using that packing tape to keep the paint from drying out so it's good to go whenever you need it. Now, here we're going to shield off with our magnets and some masking tape for the black so that we can come in here and spray some of this gray as you can see, when the lights are off, we can still kind of see some of that base Lumilor gray. So using this water-based acrylic, we're gonna go in and just, again, lightly dust it, get a nice, clean, crisp edge for the pinup girl, and remove any of that base gray so we have a consistent base of which to paint. Said pinup girl. Double check the Lumilor, and we still have the light fighting through, and now for the fun part. I know the part you've all been waiting for. We are going to start to paint the pinup girl. Now take a few moments. This is crucial, most important. Make sure that this lines up with your previous painting, whether it be a skull or whatever you're working with. Here I'm using a circular template shield. Just quickly blast in some pupils and then some irises and for this whole next section we'll be using the blue purple brown dark gray similar to black mixture this avoids any dot pattern that an opaque black will give you and if you're at all like me you've been waiting for this part starting to get this pinup girl laid out mapped out and ready for details now as you can see when i'm spraying the stencils I don't just haphazardly blast them all in. I'm darkening some areas as they should be and leaving some areas lighter. No need to overwork your stencil. And pay attention. You have reference. You should have reference. I have reference that I'm paying a lot of attention to. We're going to speed her up right away here. And you can just kind of see how we're going to flow in some shadows, make it look like that neck is behind the chin. Starting to build up the drop shadows behind the jawline and ears, behind the shoulder, and putting in some of that detail and form into the hair. Shifting the stencil as need be to make sure it does line up perfectly. Or as close as you can get it. 
Now moving forward, we're using the Auto Air Black. This is an opaque black, and I'm gonna use this to go in and spray, if I'm not in your way, I'm gonna go in and spray in some of this black. No, there's no way to do that without being right in front of the camera. All right, so just some black, done. Think you get it. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Sure, why not? Can't all be Steven Spielberg's. All right, back in with the blue, purple, brown mixture to continue mapping out the hair very quickly, very loosely. I don't want to sit here and hold this stencil all day. And then moving over to the eyebrows again, taking the time to line them up, making sure that I meant the lips, taking the time to make sure that everything is lined up and you don't have to go back in and shuffle her later because that sucks. Take it from a dude who's been there. And again, not blasting in, just laying in haphazardly. I'm being very specific on where I'm putting my paint, allowing some areas to go darker, allowing some areas to stay lighter. We don't need to overdo it at this point. And when you are painting a face, subtlety is key. Working it and overworking it will kill a face every time. So I'll reiterate it again, being subtle with your, and actually this is a great time to double check and make sure that everything lines up so that you can rock and roll. And I'm gonna let my tunes roll while I start getting into the groove of again. Laying it in, <laughs> nice and subtle, building it up. Nice and slow. I'm going to give you guys a couple few, maybe 10 minutes or so of some real time. I know y'all have been asking, so I do aim to please. Yes, indeed. And speaking of aim, see how I take aim and only apply paint to the areas where the paint need be applied. Not wasting time, not wasting paint. <laughs> what do you think of that segue? <laughs> All right, back to work. Applying the paint slowly and methodically. And I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but especially with this Lumilor, it is vitally important that we not put too much paint on this because every bit of paint we put on is only hiding that light. Some areas that's good. In a lot of areas, that's bad. So if you do happen to make a mistake, and as you can see, I got a little heavy with the darks on that bridge of the nose. Well, I'm just gonna go back in with a Q-tip and very easily remove a bit of the fuzz, making a little pointy eraser head. And with a little bit of water, you can just erase those mistakes. Water race paint, gotta love it. And that's how I do. Build it up slowly, erase it away when need be, and it is really that easy. We aren't doing any white highlights on this one. The Lumilor Light is the highlight. So it's just a matter of toning it down with our darks, erasing back our highlights. And I think I'm just going to let some music roll. I've got my tunes rolling in the background. So here, I have some royalty-free tunes for you. From me. Well, not me. I didn't make it. Somebody else did. Credits down below. You guys can get the gist of it. You don't need to hear me ramble on. Slowly. Pay attention to the trigger movements of the finger. Only applying paint where paint needs to be applied. As zen as zen can be. Don't forget to breathe. in on this this sexy little number 
this 50s bombshell beauty. You know, it takes me back, back to a simpler time. Back when things weren't, things weren't so complicated. And life, life was a breeze. You know what I'm talking about? I think you feel me. Back when a liter of cola would only cost a nickel. And the drive-in was always the best place to take your dame on a Saturday night. Well, these aren't actually my memories. I'm stealing them from movies I've watched. But I hope you get the gist. The sentiment is there. And enjoy as we paint these groovy little eyeballs. Brings a tear to my eye. Well, not really, but I thought it worked with the song. I'm gonna shut up now, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this sweet little lullaby that I didn't write, but I properly wrote. <laughs> And here we're using the finger erase method, using those those digits God gave you to uh, save some time. Not the best method, but it uh, <laughs> works in the bind. And don't forget about that tip dry. Clean that tip. Clean that tip. Working it slow, work nice and slow, repetitive, I know, but that's how I go, working it slow, work nice and slow. Now you know when those lights come down low and you're looking lovingly deep into her eyes and she is looking longingly back into yours. What's the advice that Uncle Ryan's gonna give you? Ah, you know. Billy Lullaby didn't send you off to Dreamland. Welcome back, sweethearts, to the WKRP in Calgary, the Stampede City. And speaking of Stampede, we're gonna change up the pace and kick up some dust as we circle the bend on the peaks and valleys of this sultry little number. Make sure to grab your 10 gallon hat and get your dancing boots on. Hold your partner close as we grind things down. And always remember, my lovelies, time is the most valuable thing one can give. So be sure to take your time. Don't rush. Life is a journey, not a destination. So ease back and enjoy the ride.
and feel free to drop a line if you have any requests. And if you have any questions up until this point, feel free, throw it in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Enjoy this royalty free generic mix from the station that's all motivation, sending good vibes like the high tides, WKRV in Calgary, stampeding the hearts and brains of listeners like you. Alright folks, as we build up some of the detail here in this ear, I've got something for you to hear. Keep in mind, this is only round one of building up the demented details on this sexy mamacita. Building up some of the minor details before we go in and hit the major details. Stay tuned. Keep that trigger finger nimble and keep slinging that paint. And don't forget to rock on. All right, my lovelies, and here's a great time to take notice that once we start painting some of these larger areas, that brush comes way back. Tip for the brain box. And clean that tip. Clean that tip. Alright, party people, we are back at WKRP in Calgary. All cheese for all time. And as we spin down another track from Generic Artist, we're gonna wrap up some of the details for round one on this black and white beauty 
I hope your ears weren't bleeding, but I hope you got an earworm or two. <laughs> and that will commence round one on this pinup. We're gonna turn off the lights and triple check to make sure that everything is lining up as it should. And now onto the hair. And for this, we're gonna speed things up and return to somewhat of a regular talking voice. <laughs> And I say somewhat, because I'm always somewhat hamming it up. <laughs> and as we speed things up here, I think it's a little easier to see what's being done. I know the real time is great to show you exactly how I did it. But sometimes the paint is being laid on so slow and methodically that it's really kind of hard to see what's actually being done. So speeding it up, I find... <laughs> Definitely makes it easier as we slow it down to give you some more real time. Hey, you ask for it. I am here for you. And we're going to speed it up again. <laughs> Just when you think you know what's going on, you don't. Well, I'll flip the script once again. Well, actually, there are no scripts here at the Bloodshot channel. We wing it. It's all craziness. A cheese factor of 11.5 and rising <laughs> and this is kind of the round two of detail so i hope you're paying attention <laughs> here we're going back to the shield just to darken up a few areas get some depth in behind those teeth and back in with some real time only to speed things up yet again i know guys i know it's already getting long in the tooth this is a long video lots to be done in painting a face i hope you've learned something i hope you saw something that's triggered a brain itch where you figured that's how i can do it next time but for this time i think we've got her pretty much pretty close only a few things left And she really is shaping up to be quite the knockout. Have to agree with my friends at Social Distortion. <laughs> and a bit more of that scratching technique that we were using in on the lightning. Sped things up to show you how I did it. Now I'm going to slow things down to show you how I do it. <laughs> and again, pretty straightforward. Don't know if it requires much explaining. As I've already gone in and toned the hair with the airbrush, I'm going to now scratch and scrape and keep these lines, again, trying to keep them longer than shorter. Little short lines are going to look like a bunch of scratches. The longer you can get them, the nicer they'll feel like hair. And again, playing with highlights, working the highlighted areas to brighten it up and kind of staying away from the darker areas. Maybe a hair or two in front just to make it again look more realistic but that's kind of how i done did it and now to tone it back with the airbrush just to push some few dimensions to finish up the finale of the finalizing for the hair fin finesse your hair too beautiful finesse and then using that same scratching technique, because remember, I don't have the opportunity of painting highlights on this. If I were to put white over it, it would actually just darken the paint so that the lights would have a harder chance to fight through. So me scratching back the paint gives the light an easier chance to fight through so that once the Lumilor gets turned on, well, we all get turned on, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, guys, round three of just pushing, pushing back those areas that I've scratched, getting those tones so everything sits in nicely with everything else, and peeling back the masking tape for a final ghosting of white, only behind the pinup and the teardrop again i'm trying to make sure that this doesn't go into the black inside the teardrop this just gives the hair a little bit of a dimension and then we can do a shadow onto the pinstripe and a bit of a shadow behind the ghosting 
if that makes sense. And with a paintbrush, I'm going to do some final details in the eyelashes, in the teeth, and the moly moly mole, just to crisp up a few areas. And then to finally peel back the pinstripe tape, slap on some lettering like Harry Potter would, and then just a little bit of a metallic highlight for the earring. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty pleased with this one. Let me know what you guys think. Again, sorry there are no scripts. It's just me having fun. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you learned a thing or two. Again, feel free to drop a line. Let me know what you think. All shiny and back from clears. Quite happy with the results, but this really doesn't say much. I mean... It's quite fantastic, <laughs> if I were to say so myself, and I'm a little biased, of course. But I know you know what's lurking behind these sexy little mamacitas. Would you like to see? Would ya? Let's flip on the Lumilor, and you can kind of see what we've got going on. Yeah, she looks kind of ghostly. I dig it. Almost, almost like an x-ray. Again, you don't get much of the effect during the daytime, where we just have the pearl white over top of the Lumilor. We definitely get more of an impact. But where we've had to go in and with grays and then blends, well, we started to lose a bit of that light. But we can kill one of the lights in the studio here. Like so. And you can see how even in a dimly lit room, this guy is really coming through. Whereas where we have more of a light still shining on it. We've got the pinup girl. Let's go one step further. Let's kill all the lights. And there you have her. In all of her reaping madness. The Grim Reaper. Lady Death herself. Man, this stuff is pretty cool. And then if we pop on a flashlight, <laughs> now we can see her. We got that Harley Davidson reveal. And then we take the light away. And so disappears the Harley Davidson lettering and the pinup girl. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Definitely a game changer for the industry. And I hope this little tutorial will help you along your journey. Should you choose to play with this stuff. It is rather expensive, so mistakes can be costly. <laughs> Learn on my dime. <laughs> because yes, I am still learning. Learning as I'm teaching. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. <laughs> or maybe just the mad scientist and his little disciples. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions. If you played with this stuff before, and you have a better process, we're all ears. There's more mad scientists out there playing with the stuff. I'm just one of many. So do feel free to drop me a line. Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers.
And feel free to slide on by the Bloodshot Airbrushing webpage to pick up the aforementioned French Curve stencils set of six for only five dollars. You can also swing over to the Bloodshot Airbrushing spread shirt merch page and pick yourself up a Bloodshot Army uniform. We've got the Bloodshot Air Force as well. And don't forget, guys, we've got the airbrushing hacks, airbrushing for beginners, and plenty of tutorials. Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.